Angie the Craft NATO. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. Um, my name is Angie. My YouTube name is Craft NATO because I do a whole bunch of different crafts. And I'm just going to show you a little bit of um, the kinds of things that I do crafting wise. I'm going to end up at the end with uh, diamond painting. And it is a very exciting diamond painting for me to show you guys. It's probably my biggest, most adventurous a uh, diamond painting that I've ever undertaken and I'm very 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 close to the end super close to finishing it so I hope that um I get a chance to show it to you and because I've got all of this other stuff sitting on top of it so let's just I get right into it I want to say hi to everybody well I can't say hi to everybody who's here there are so many people here but hello everybody uh, not this is your first time here welcome I hope that you like it hi Karen and Judy and Carissa Blunts and Gems and hi Tia and Lisa and Tammy hi Chantel hi Crashly and Dawn and Jenny Rose and Renee I can't say hi to hi everybody I'm so excited that you're all here now I'm just going to preface this with a little bit of a warning I might be running a little bit slow today I had a uh, kind of a major surgery yesterday um, and I'm, so I might be moving a little bit more slowly than I normally do. Let's get into, I'm just going to do some, I'm going to call them peripheral crafts. They are crafts that I like to do, but I don't do them necessarily every day. I love putting together these wood pu puzzles. They're from a company called Wood Trick. You can find them on Amazon or you can find them on the Wood Trick website. And what it is, is they're all, um, wood pieces now this one does have a few screws in it um but this was a clock that i made last year uh during the michigan retreat and it is a functional clock and it's um no glue or anything holds these together it's all snapped wood and i have several of these kits i have uh, another clock i have a jewelry box a sailing ship um nate and i just made a catapult last weekend a functional catapult that was a lot of fun these are really, oh, and a hurdy-gurdy. I don't know. Do you guys know what a hurdy-gurdy is? A hurdy-gurdy is like an old-fashioned-y kind of musical instrument. And we are making a hurdy-gurdy out of wood, uh, wood puzzle pieces, which is really cool. So that's one of the things that I like to do. Another thing I like to do is miniatures. I have tons and tons of miniatures. This is my most recent uh, completion of a miniature that I've done. It's just a small room. My next one that I'm going to tackle is I have a huge Japanese uh, tea house, um, sushi bar tea house, and it's about three stories tall, and it's a very big restaurant. And that's going to be the next one I tackle. Currently in the works, I have um, Sam's Book, Sam's Book Store from Row Life, which is a the brand that I prefer in um, miniatures. But that's another thing that I like to do. But I have to be in the right mood for that because it is very teeny detailed work. You can see that you have to, all those books in that bookcase, you have to cut them out and fold them up and make all the flowers. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's a lot of fun, but it is tedious. So if you're not into tedium, <laughs> might not be the thing for you. Another thing that I do enjoy doing is tapestries. Um, I'm working on this tapestry right now. I don't have very much done on it at all. Um, that would be an understatement. But tapestries are a lot like, well, they're a little bit like cross stitch, but you use a large needle and you use yarn and you weave um, in a continental stitch um, into the color coded areas. And then you've also got, you know, your regular sheet there. Um, tapestry, if if this is going to be a pillow. I have a pillow back that's going to go with it. Um, and these are really fun and relaxing to do. It's kind of like a combination of latch hook and cross stitch. And in, in my opinion, that's kind of what it reminds me of. So that's another thing that I like to do. Um, again, not as this is not an everyday. <laughs> I, I, I'm going from my least, my least visited crafts to my daily visited crafts. So um, another thing that I like to do, I can't get this back in here. Let's set it off to the side. That I don't think gets just attention in the crafting world. 
And I'd be interested to know how many people out there know about it or even do a punch needle. So these are a couple of punch needle kits that I have done. These are technically not completed because they wanted you to punch needle the background as well. And I think I liked them better without the background punch needled. Now, the lines that you see on there, those are washable. They wash off. They'll rinse. All you got to do is soak it in water and those lines will wash off. Um, but there are two different ways that you can do punch needle. Punch needle is either done with yarn, which is the way these two were done, and a a thicker punch needle hook um, on this stuff called monk's cloth, which is kind of like a, um, it reminds me of an eight of cloth kind of, but it's a little bit more, it's not as stiff as Ada. Um, and it's a lot, it's very strong um, because you're punching, you're punching through, you know, all this uh, yarn and it, and it holds it in. So this is what it looks like on the back. Um, so the, the, I'll show you on this other kit. So there are two different ways to punch needle. You can punch needle with yarn and monk's cloth, or you can punch needle with embroidery thread and, uh, and, um, uh, embroidery cloth. And that is what this one is going to be. It's going to be this cute little mushroom. I've already done this one once for my daughter and it turned out so cute that I bought it again to do it for myself. Um, and I didn't, <laughs> I think I got one color done so far, just those little gray rocks. But this is the tool that you use. And it, it, this is just a cheap one that comes with a punch needle kit. Um, and I don't know if you can see, but at the end of the needle, there's a hole. And what you have to do is it's a two step threading process of threading your floss and you use the whole six strands of floss. Um, through the needle and then through the no that little hole in the nose of the needle and then what you do is you've got your working yarn or your working uh embroidery floss coming out of the end of this and you just find your area that you want to um that you want to cover whatever whatever color you're doing and you put your needle in and you just punch punch it through and then as you bring it out and go over to the next area, you just keep punching along. And as you do that, your embroidery thread then jumps to, you know, wherever you punch next and you eventually fill up your, fill up your design and, you know, change your colors in that. Now, punch needle can get really um, detailed. You can do it where, um, like for this, on this one, for example, this is done in two different ways. This, most of these flowers on this one are done punched from the front to the back, but this flower, I wanted to make it a little bit more puffy. Um, so I punched this one opposite. I punched it back to the front so that the fuzzy part was showing up on the front. And you can do that with um, this type of embroidery floss punch needle as well as the yarn type, um, either way. But punch needle, like I said, it's not anything that I see a lot of out there, but I really, really enjoy doing it. And if, if you like hand embroidery, you would love punch needle. Punch needle can yield really fast results. Like you can get something really beautiful done in a very quick amount of time. It's a very instant gratification. There's a little bit of a learning curve to it as far as getting used to where to punch and how far away to make your spaces and not have big um, bubbles or gaps or whatever. Uh, but other than that, you, um, you, it's, it's, it's really fun. It is fun. Um, yeah, yeah, you're right, Mindy. It's at the, um, at the retreat I jump for, I, I do, I switch crafts during the day. I, I switch crafts. That's why I'm called Craft NATO because I just go from craft to craft to craft. Um, another thing that I do enjoy is cross stitch. Uh, not as much as I do diamond painting and crocheting. Those are probably my two highest level, uh, uh, of interest crafts. But right now I'm doing this 
Lila Studio pattern called Nevermore. And I'm doing it on 36 count um, Picture This Plus linen. And so far, this is what I've done. <laughs> so not much, but I mean, it's actually a lot. This is 36 count fabric. So it's, it's, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Um, you sent me two messages, Cynthia. Okay. I will check. Um, like I said, I've been sick and in the hospital and just had surgery yesterday. So, uh, I'm probably behind on a lot of things. So that is my cross. That's my current cross stitch whip. If I'm going to, I have, you know, other cross stitch whips out there. If I'm going to cross stitch though, this is what I'm going to work on. Now, my last craft before I get to my two main crafts is something that I don't think I've ever shown on my channel. Um, these are rock candles. Now, this is something that I'm going to be teaching a class on, and you guys are going to eat. Everybody will get to go home with one of these if you're coming to the Missouri retreat next month. Um, they're polished. These are all Michigan Lake and River collected rocks and minerals and... Um, uh, uh, oh, forgive me, fossils. Um, there's a lot, some Petoskey stones in there and they're just polished up and put them, put on a jar candle. And then when you light the candle, it, when it burns from within, it glows out between these rocks and they're so shiny and sparkly and twinkly. And it looks really, really pretty. Now, if you're somebody who can't stand to have a candle burning in your house, you could get the same effect by using just a plain jar and putting one of those, um, one of those lights in it that, you know, the tea lights, the battery operated tea lights. I've done that for a few people. Um, I've sold these at craft shows for about 15 years and have done quite well with them. And everybody loves them. And when their candle is you know, burned through, they switch to the tea lights and everybody loves them. So that's one of, this was my first craft that I ever did. And this was something I kind of invented on my own. Um, I didn't invent it. I copied it. We were at a resort, uh, up in Northern Michigan. I'm from Michigan and they had one of these for sale in a gift shop for $50. And I thought, shoot, I can make that because I've always been a rock gatherer when we've been on vacations and stuff. So um, I bought the materials and just had at it, and I've been doing it ever since. I also make picture frames. Um, I've done lined mirrors. I've made, uh, Jeff has built me birdhouses, and I've rocked the birdhouses. Those are really cool, too. Um, the picture frames turn out awesome. I, I don't have any here because I've either sold them all or gifted them away. But um, it's a, that's a fun one. It's a fun one. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I need healing vibes. <laughs> um, I probably could show let um well I'd have to turn the lights off and find a lighter. Um and then that one doesn't have any wax left in it. But it, whatever. It is <laughs> just you're gonna have to believe me. So now we'll get to my two main crafts. The two main crafts that I work on every single day without fail are crochet and diamond painting. I'm always doing one or the other of those two things. So I just wanted to show you a few of the things that I have recently completed or that I am working on. So I recently, um, this summer I made myself this top and I love it. I think it's super cute. It is. T um, ties in the back. It has these, um, you know, ties in the back <laughs> that you can, you guys really, you have to forgive me. I'm not all there today. Um, and so that's, that's one of the things that I made for this summer for myself. Another thing that I made this summer for myself, and if you have seen me in person this summer, then you have seen this top because I wear this top everywhere I go. This is my new favorite shirt. Um, I wear this all the time. It is crocheted using two different kinds of yarn from Hobby um, in a pattern. It's called the Kaleidoscope Top on the Hobby's uh, free pattern website if you're interested. And it was a really, it's, it's actually just two panels, two panels that get sewn together and then a little bit of edging at the top and the bottom and around the sleeve holes. 
but I think this turned out really cool. It's one of my favorites. I know that it drives Mindy nuts <laughs> because she thinks it, it makes Mindy dizzy. I think it's cool as heck. In fact, I'm making a second and third one, one for my mom and one for my daughter, Emily. Um, I also had a first this summer uh, with crochet. I designed my own bag. I made, I, I actually came up with the design of um, myself without using a pattern and I made this bag. Um, of course, the handle was store-bought. We got this uh, when Mindy and I went on our yarn crawl now I do have a button for my flap. I just haven't put it on yet. I just picked that up last weekend. Um, I had I couldn't find a place. I had a hard time finding a button that would match my uh, handle up there. So I did find one finally and I just have to sew that button on. And so I have been in a bag making mood. So I have also made and some of you might have seen these things before if you watch my channel because I think I've told I think I've shown them. Um, this fall, I'm going on a trip to Florida with three girlfriends, and I'm making us each a beach bag. So these are uh, Yarnspirations patterns from um, made from Caron Cotton Cakes, um, and just two different colors, same pattern. And I am also making another one. This is for my friend Jody. Um, this is a different pattern, but it's also a Caron Cotton Cake bag. So those are those two bags. And then I had to jump on the bad wagon with the granny square bags because everybody and their brother this summer has been making and showing the granny square tote bags. So I just had to. These are two that I have finished. Well, not totally finished. I got to tuck the tails. Um, but these are two that I have finished and I have several more that all they need is to be put together. I have all the squares made. So I've made probably six of these this summer and I'm really they're fun to make I mean it's just a really simple starburst granny square you make 13 of them put them together and um, put some handles on and you're good to go you're good to go with those so then that brings me to the other thing I've been going crazy with is hats these are a couple of hats that I've made in the last couple of days um, I made this big slouchy hat for my friend Jody. Um, she spotted this yarn in my craft room when I was showing her a picture of something else. She's like, what's that yarn over there? Um, what's that yarn with the peach? She's like, I really like that. So I'm going to make her a hat and scarf and a uh, fingerless glove set. And this is the hat that I just finished day before yesterday. Um, then this hat I made using some fancy yarn that I got from the yarn crawl this summer. Um, it has sparkles in it. I don't know if you can see those sparkles in the camera, but it's really, really, really pretty. And I love, this reminds me of candy corn or um, uh, Indian corn uh, that, you know what I mean? Um, hard, hard kernel corn cobs that are multicolored. Yeah. So, but I love that. So I've been making that. I am also currently working on a sweater. Now this sweater is using the same yarn as what um, the yarn for Jody's hat that I just finished day before yesterday. This is a really interesting sweater. This is made in one piece and here are the armholes here and it's going to be very long as you can see. It's going to be a, a cardigan, but you're making it in the round and you, it actually ends up being, you know, longer than it is wide because you're going to do some increases along the sides and some decreases at the top and the bottom. And then you'll put your sleeves on. The sleeve holes are here. You'll put your sleeves on and it'll be a cardigan. And so that's what that one's going to look like. This was actually a test pattern that I was doing for, um, there's a local yarn shop here that has asked me if I would teach a uh, crochet class this fall, uh, making a sweater. So this was a, just a test pattern to see maybe if they would like, if she would like to use this pattern, but I think we've chosen something else, um, more of a chunky sweater than this, but this is really nice, soft, 
yarn. This is from um, Yarn Bee. It's Hobby Lobby yarn. Um, and it's a three weight yarn. So you can imagine to make a, and this is like an ankle length sweater when you're done with it. It's very long. You're going to go through some yarn. But this is called Simply Flawless. It's a 100% low pill acrylic. So it's got a really nice shine to it. And it's very, very, very soft, nice yarn. I've also gotten into making um, what, like, not doilies, but wall hangings. So this is just one of the wall hangings that I'm working on using um, Red Heart. Oh, what is it called? Red Heart. I want to say Shawl in a Ball, but that, I know that's not it. Because um, that's Lion Brand, that's Shawl in a Ball. Red Heart. It's a wrap. That's what I'm using for that, for this. Red Heart, it's a wrap. So once this gets a little bit bigger, you're going to stretch out the edges and mount it to a wire um, round frame, and it'll become a wall hanging. So I've got about three of these in the works using different colors of the Red Heart um, It's a Wrap yarn. And I really like the way that this is turning out too. I think it's going to look really pretty once it gets all stretched out. <sighs> then um, the other thing that I'm working on that is kind of a priority right now is I have never done a, uh, well, that's not true. I am working on a few kits. This is one of the first kits I ever purchased, and I got this from Hirschner's, but look at that. Isn't that the coolest? I absolutely, I saw this on the Hirschner's website, the spider web shawl, fell in love with it, and ordered this kit. So I'm not very far along. I just have this, um, the back spider web area done, um, but this is very, very lightweight yarn. I, I think it's like a two-weight yarn. So it takes a lot of time to get, it actually took a lot of time even to get it to that size. Then my other crochet thing that I'm working on is so close to finished. And this is probably, if this diamond painting underneath here is my most prized diamond painting that I've ever done, this blanket is probably my most prized crochet item that I've ever done. This is um, called New Beginnings. It is a hooked on sunshine pattern and it uses Alizé uh, Bella Ombre Batik yarn, which is a two weight cotton yarn. So it's a very, very fine yarn. So I'm using a three and a half millimeter hook. And this blanket is pretty darn big. I've got it folded in half, um, you know, on my table here. And so it's uh, probably, I don't know. It's pretty wide by pretty long, um, but I still have to put, I, I'm on my very last, I thought I was going to get it done tonight too, and I, and I didn't. I have one square left to go. I've got one square that needs to go right there in the middle, and then I'll be finished with this. But I love Hooked on Sunshine. I love her patterns, and I've got several of her patterns, and this one I think is my favorite of the Hooked on Sunshine patterns. And I love the ombre effect of the yarn too. Um, and it's just a really nice yarn to work with. Then I got two more, um, uh, another Hooked on Sunshine pattern that I'm working on is a blanket for my friend Sue. And this is called the Ardith blanket. And everybody, if you've been on my channel before, you've seen this, but this is the Ardith blanket. Is also very, very fun to work with. I had to set this aside though for the summer months just because it got to be so heavy. It was too warm for me to work on in the summer. <coughs> Excuse me. So that now that fall has hit, I can get that going on that. And then of course, last but not least, one fun new thing that I'm doing this summer that I've never done before is I, Mindy and I are doing a crochet along on Mindy's channel and we are making a pillow. And it is a pillow made out of Not Your Granny's Granny Squares. So the pillow is made using multiple squares in uh, colorways of your choice. 
And what we're going to do at the end of this is some of these squares are going to become octagons and they're going to get all sewed together and form a pillow cover. And so uh, every Friday at two o'clock, we're doing that crochet along. And this is a pattern from Sisters in Stitch. It's called the Island Stroll Crochet Along, if you're interested um, in checking them out on their website. You can do the pillow version or you can get a bigger weight yarn and a larger hook size and do a blanket version of this crochet along with all these different squares. Uh, we decided just to do the pillow because, well, it's already, we've been going for about, I want to say eight weeks now. And we're on part seven, eight or nine weeks. Um, but yeah, part seven. Yes, it is a, it is a great pattern. Um, Miki, pick up crocheting again. Yes. Um, the pink pat the pink blanket pattern is called New Beginnings, and it's from Hooked on Sunshine is the name of the um, um, the name of the pattern. So that brings me to my diamond painting. This is my current work in progress. Well, I have fifty whips in diamond painting, but this is the one I've been working on most. And this is called Diana. This is from Diamond Painting Deutschland out of Germany. And um, it is a round drill kit. And it is Diana who is the Roman goddess of the hunt and wilderness. And I am almost completely, it's uh, by Josephine Wall. And I'm almost completely done with it. And this has been this has been the experience of a lifetime for me in terms of diamond painting. This number one, the size of it, and it doesn't have the it doesn't have the dimensions um, on the canvas. So I'm just going to measure it real quick. I'll give it to you in. Um, I'm gonna have to give it to you in inches. Thirty two inches by. 40 inches. So it's 32 by 40 inches. And she is just absolutely gorgeous. She has 250 colors. So the fact of the size of the canvas itself, combined with the amount of colors that you have to work with, has given this so much depth. But it has also, um, it is so um confetti um there's very very few opportunities for any kind of multi-placing on this whatsoever i mean if you get to put two drills down of the same color at one time then you're lucky so this is where i'm at with it i've only got these this little bit left here to complete and the little teeny bit of this section that i'm not quite done with now I have been working on this off and on for, um, for, I think I started this last September. So off and on, I've been working on it for a year. My goal is to get it finished by the end of this month. Um, yes. So yeah, I'm going to, um, yes, it is J wall, Kira. It's, um, Diana. Yup. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Risa and GMR. Thank you, Sue. It is very pretty. Um, I am trying right now to decide which diamond painting um, I want to do for the event next month, the Big Bold and Beautiful event that's happening next month. Um, if we, it has to be 95 by 70 centimeters minimum. And so um, I don't know if I want to tackle another J wall. Uh, I do have another diamond painting Deutschland Josephine wall. I also ha I have the three graces and that I have in a square drill. And I was going to do that one. But being that I just finished or will have just finished this one, I don't know if I want to commit myself to 
another 250 color uh, kit. So I'm looking at possibly doing the Spirit of Flight from DAC, which I believe that one had 68 colors. Or um, I may do um, Medusa um, from Diamond Art Club that just recently came out. Because that is 99 by 70. So um, I think I'm just going to work on this for a little bit and chit chat with you guys. Um, I kind of rolled through all that stuff faster than I thought I was going to. Um, <sighs> is yes, it's it's a fun, fun diamond painting to work on. I think that everybody, at least once in their diamond painting career, if you're a diamond painter, should work on a canvas like this that has all of these colors. Um, it's just it's a different experience. I don't know any other way to describe it than that. It's just a really different experience. And I've got to put these out in order. So I know a lot of people don't like these containers that are the little pill box 56 grid, but they actually ended up working out perfectly for this because I had 250 colors and um, it made it so I could easily have access to all of my colors right at my fingertips. Um, I did have to keep my spare drills in, you know, in the baggies and refill these because they are quite small. But it really wasn't that, um, it really wasn't that, that big. Yeah, no, I do not ever sleep. That is true. I actually... Um, who was it with Kara was just talking about um, crafting ADD. I definitely have that. I switch from craft to craft to craft all day, every day. Um, in addition to the things that I just showed you, I also do Legos, big scale Legos. Like I've done the Death Star from Star Wars. I have the um, modular building series, all 15 of those. Um, those are displayed on my bookcases, which need to get put away because yarn has overtaken my bookcases. Um, I also got a sewing machine, a quilting sewing machine for Christmas last year. And um, it is just waiting for me to clear out my, my craft room so that I can get to working on that because that's going to be my next craft that I want to tackle is I want to learn how to quilt. I really enjoy learning and there's so many great things. I mean, there are so many things in the world of crafting that you can, that you can try and do um, that I have not yet had the opportunity to do. Someone earlier was talking about pixel painting I, or mosaic pixels. I just saw an advertisement for those and I really want to try those. It looks like kind of a cross between diamond painting and mosaic. Um, it looks really interesting. So I, I want to give that a try. I want to get my um, sewing machine going so I can give that a try. And I'd also like to... Um, um, I bought, when I went to the Michigan Fiber Festival last month, I bought some um, unspun wool and a spindle, and I want to try my hand at spinning my own yarn. And so that's something that I have the materials to do it. I just haven't, haven't, haven't had time to do it yet. It takes a lot of practice and a lot of con con um, concentration to keep your tension um, right. And uh, yeah, I, I just haven't been in the right mindset yet to tackle that. A lot of times um, there are so few of one color in any section on this diamond painting that I don't even bother pouring them in the tray. I just pluck them out of the drill container because it's just easier um, because there aren't very many, you know, of the same color in, in one section. 
But if you've never done, and you know, out of all, I had a, I, I'm not going to bash or any, I'm not bashing any company. Um, I have a Josephine wall from Diamond Art Club. I haven't done it yet. It's Spirit of Flight. Um, I have two Josephine walls from Diamond Painting Deutschland, which is where this one was from. The other one that I have is the Three Graces, and that's in a square drill. Um, and then I also had a Josephine wall um, in Max Colors, or I think that's what they call it. Um, it. I think it was close to 200 colors from Uniquely Yours Down Under. Now, if I had to choose, you know, I've worked on diamond, plenty of Diamond Art Clubs. So, you know, Diamond Art Club is, I, I know the the quality is there and the, you know, uh, the enjoyability is there. And I know that the charting is there and that it's going to come out looking good. Um, but I, if I had to choose between diamond painting Deutschland and uniquely yours down under, I would go with diamond painting Deutschland a hundred times over. Um, just in my experience, uh, that I have had with both of them. Um, the, this canvas has been used and abused and I traveled with this. I actually rolled it up and took it with me to the Michigan retreat this year. And I have, it is double-sided adhesive. And I know that that's a turnoff to a lot of people. It doesn't bother me. Um, I don't mind double-sided adhesive, but if you're really, really against it, then, you know, this might not be the type of diamond painting for you but I don't mind it at all. And I have had no problem sliding my drills around to get them repositioned. I know that that's sometimes a common complaint with double-sided adhesive, but I've not had any of those problems. I have had no problems with rivers or bubbling or anything like that. And I'm in no way like affiliated with Diamond Painting Deutschland, but that's, it's just been my, my opinion that they have a superior product. They, it's just very, very good. Um, in addition to the two Josephine walls I have from them, I also have a very large landscape from them um, that's not attributed to an artist. I think it was taken from a photograph. It's like a stock image. Um, it, and it is the same good quality. And, uh, you know, the canvas is awesome. The drills are amazing. Yeah, everything everything oh yes mindy and what else do i ever breathe jeanette i'm so sorry yes sometimes i do <laughs> um uh mindy what else are we going to try the other thing we're going to try when we went to the fiber festival we also picked up some undyed wool yarn and we are going to try our hand at hand dyeing some yarn. Um, so Mindy and I, we got some regular superwash merino wool, a hank of that. And we also got a hank of Angora, um, I believe it's an Angora blend, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's undyed. And we're gonna try our hand at, try our hand at hand dyeing. So, and I'm sure we'll do that on a video. <laughs> We've got to do it before it gets too cold outside because I think, you know, I'm not the most um, graceful person. And so uh, I think that we might be best served by doing that in an outside area rather than somebody's kitchen because I think it might make a mess. And I'll even, you know, actually I'll volunteer my kitchen. Um, if you want to come up my way, Mindy, we're, we're definitely going to do it. Um, you, Mindy, you should have grabbed this sucker and put some, um, drills on it. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, Jeanette, um, Jeff and I talked about framing because Jeff has been building frames for me for a long time for my diamond paintings. And let me just show you the kind of frames that he does. Um, what I end up doing, I just happen to have this sitting there. What I end up doing is I will paint the borders with acrylic paint. And then he builds a frame 
uh, using furring strips and like very lightweight um, wood. And then we glue and staple the canvas onto there. And that's how we've been making the frame. So they're, you know, frameless frames. Um, and it works out really, really well, but it does make it a little bit heavy. That Nightbringer, that was Nightbringer, the one I just showed you, um, is, is probably about half as big as this diamond painting Deutschland um, that I'm working on. And it's very, very heavy. So I can't imagine um, how heavy it would be if I framed this. So I have a spot on my wall over there that's cleared out and ready for this to be hung on it. But I think I'm going to go low class with it and I'm just going to cut the edges off or, or maybe do a little painting around the edges and stick it to the wall somehow. Because um, I think that I, 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 it would, until my ship comes in, Jeanette, if my ship comes in and I get lots and lots of money, then I would definitely pay to have this professionally framed because I think it's worth it. Um, it was not a cheap kit to begin with. And add on to that the fact that I've been working on it almost for a year. Um, so I've got a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this. At one point, when I um, put these drills together, these are not in DMC order or anything. I put these together in a way that made sense to me as far as the symbols go. Um, like all arrows are together. This is my blue container. All the arrows are together. All the boxes are together. You know, all the turnaround like U's are together. I dropped this bin of blue on the floor and they spilled out. So I ended up, and I didn't know what colors I was going to be short on. So I ended up buying the 447 color art dot kit to supplement what I had lost. And those ended up being really, really nice drills. I was very impressed with that. I ordered it on Amazon and I got it. Um, it wasn't Amazon days, but it was uh, at a time where Amazon had them on sale. And I think I got that whole set for like $26, which wasn't bad at all, I didn't think. Um, but I've been dying to show everybody this, uh, this canvas, and it's, it's going to look so good. It's so, so good. So, so good. Yes, she definitely deserves... Um, uh, house or she deserves a spot on the wall yeah definitely Mindy said at my place we're doing the that's fine we can we can do it at my place that's fine we can do the yarn dyeing at my house yep as soon as I recover I'm not supposed to be doing anything for a whole week um but I uh you know, this was pre-planned, so we, I had to, I had to follow through, had to follow through and do it. So, it, um, I was really excited to participate in this event. I think it's awesome. I love these craft-a-thons. I love seeing what everybody is getting into. Is Crashly still here? Because I've got an idea for her, and I want to get with her and ask her if she can do something for me. I want her to make me I want to send her a set of aluminum crochet hooks and I want her to make me clay handles for them. And I think she can do that. Crashly, you think you could do that? If I sent you a set of aluminum crochet hooks and told you at what point on the hook I wanted the clay to start, could you make me a set of ergonomic clay crochet hooks? I bet you could. I bet you could. We're going to have to talk about that. Because I I have a hard time with the ergonomic hooks. They they're never they're never um um Oh, you're working on one for Mindy already? Ah, so I'm a little bit late to the party on that. 
Yeah. You guys have talked. Okay. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Try the curtain rod thing. What's the curtain rod thing? Hang this up on a curtain rod on my wall? That's not a bad idea. That is not a bad idea. Because Crashly, my, my thing is, I want... What I want is I, I want the clay to start at a specific spot on the hook um, because the ones that you that are available right now, there's not enough hook space available for me. I want the clay to start a little bit farther back just because of the way I hold my hook. So, and I'm thinking, yes, she could do that. But great minds must think alike because Mindy's already on you for that one. Great minds must already be in the works on that one. With fancy shower hooks. Okay, that's an excellent idea. I'm going to have to run that past Jeff. I'm sure that he can work. I'm sure that he can do that. I'm sure of it. That's a very, very good idea. Thank you. See, I get so many good ideas just from listening to everybody. So many good ideas. So I have, um, um, you have crazy ideas. Yeah, let's do this. Yes, I could definitely mark, um, I could definitely mark on the hook where I'd want to, uh, where I'd want it to be, to start. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. So this is going to, um, for all of you guys out there, and I appreciate everybody that was able to come tonight. Um, Billy um, is going to be coming on next after me. And I think t is after him. So we got a great lineup for the rest of the night and for the rest of the weekend. I have enjoyed so far. Um, I was at both Tia and Kara Principal Painters Live. Had a great time at both of those. You know, it's really interesting because a lot of the things I know, a lot of the things that some people are into, I am just not that talented with. I wish that I could draw. I wish that I could even participate with adult coloring. I am horrible at it. My five-year-old granddaughter can color a picture in a coloring book better than I can. And that's no joke. I don't, I was, was never blessed with that gift. Um, give me a crochet hook and a ball of yarn and I can whip something out for you, lickety split. But hand me a crayon or a marker or a colored pencil and you're going to end up with a stick figure every time. Um, and it's going to be an ambidextrous, or a, uh, not an ambidextrous, a amorphous, uh, stick figure. You're not going to be able to tell if it's a man or a woman or a child or anything. Um, but everyone has, that's what I love about this crafting community. There are so many people with so many different talents and with like, the stuff with clay, um, making the clay pens and, and, and that I would, I tried. Um, I took a class at last year's uh, Michigan retreat and tried my hand at making a clay pen and there's no way that I could ever 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 make something as beautiful as what I have seen you people um that do do that come up with and it's just it's really cool that we all have our niches and that we are also in like with Kara Kara with her DIY projects there is no way that I could go to the dollar store and come out with stuff and put it together in a way that looks as good as the things that she comes out with um, as her finished products. Some people have an eye for that sort of thing and some people do not. I, I am not a person who has an eye for that sort of thing. So I think that you know and but like Kara was saying too like she, Brandy has tried by the way happy birthday Brandy if she's here, um, a lot of people have tried to teach Kara to crochet and she can't get the hang of that. It's just, it's so awesome that we can all have so many varied crafting interests, but they're not all the same. Um, 
you know, and, but they're still similar enough that it unifies us as a community of crafters and, um, you know, brings us together in so many different ways, which I think it is, is an amazing thing. And I am just absolutely thrilled to be a part of this community and to have been able to participate in this craft-a-thon. And I am going to, I'm not going to be sleeping because I am so sore. Um, so I am looking forward to hanging out with everybody all night long. Um, and I'm not going to be able to sit in here and diamond paint because it's just way too uncomfortable. But I will be finishing up that pink blanket tonight. Like I said, I'm on, I'm, I've got one square to go and I'm almost finished with that square. I just have to sew that final square in and I've got five rows of border, and then I'm finished with that blanket. Now, that blanket got done faster than any other blanket that I've ever worked on, I think because I enjoyed the pattern so much. That's my only blanket that I have going on right now that does not yet have an intended recipient. I don't know anybody who's having a little girl. I, 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 I don't have any, I don't have a home for that blanket yet. Um, it was just a pattern that I saw that I wanted to do, that I loved that yarn and ordered the yarn and went to town and just couldn't stop working on it. Now, my friend Jody is going to be becoming a first time grandmother um, very soon. And she finds out if they're having a boy or a girl, I believe the, this weekend. And so if it's a girl, then that's where that blanket's going. <laughs> If it's a boy, I'm going to have to just go start stalking the neighborhoods um, uh, and just see. Oh, Craftably's here. Hi, Craftably. How are you? None of you guys can draw Karen either. <laughs> That's funny. That is too funny. Sunday, you'll know if it's a boy or a girl. Right. Okay. That is, uh, and I'm hoping it's a girl because then this blanket has a home. Otherwise, it's just going to sit around here for God knows how long. So um, I'm thinking about actually, and I, I, I'm doing a little bit more than thinking about it. I might as well just announce it right now. Um, I have set up and have not yet opened but I'm getting my inventory entered from my crochet projects because I have a lot of finished product. I crochet not necessarily with an end recipient in mind, but I just crochet for the fun of it and for the end result. So I have um, two totes full of finished crochet projects and I am going to um, put them, I, I'm putting them in right now um, starting an Etsy shop. So I am really going to, I'll be excited to announce that when it opens. Um, I want to make sure that I have, you know, products in there. There'll be a mix of clothing, hats and scarves, sweaters, which would be clothing, um, you know, shawls, ponchos, mitts, um, Anything that you can imagine that can be crocheted besides amigurumi. I don't do amigurumi. Um, I, not that I can't. It's just not my, just not my favorite. There'll be bags in there. Um, what else? Just everything. Basically everything that I've got that are in my two totes that are completed. Um, I'm going to be listing in my Etsy shop. So Keep an ear out and a listen. I'll definitely make a, you know, a hard announcement of when that is going to go live. Um, but I'm pretty excited about that. You know, not because I want to get rich or make a lot of money, but more to find somebody who likes my stuff and who will use it. You know. Yes, Dreamer, you're correct. People don't want to pay what it's worth. I understand that I'm not going to get what it's worth. Um, I, I understand that. Because the amount of hours that I have in can in no way be compensated 
at any reasonable way. I just, if I can recoup my expenses from my materials and pay for shipping, then I'm satisfied. Um, I'm not looking to get rich off doing it. I'm just looking to recoup my expenses. That's all. That's all because I am, um, and for those of you who don't know me, um, I am a full-time crafter, um, that doesn't, I, I am retired, um, and I am legitimately a full-time crafter. I get up, I craft all day, every day. Um, I don't clean house. My husband cleans the house. My husband does the grocery shopping. My husband does the cooking. Um, my husband does everything. I literally craft. If I'm awake, I'm crafting. I even took my crochet bag to the hospital with me yesterday so that while I was waiting um, in pre-op, I could crochet um, because it helps me with anxiety. And the nurses laughed at me, but it, you know, I, I literally am a full-time crafter. So I end up with a lot of finished product and I'm not only a full-time crafter, but I'm a full-time buyer. Um, I get sucked in to yarn. I'm a sucker for a good yarn deal. And I'm, to me, yarn is like, Ooh, that's so pretty. It's so soft. I love that. I've got to have it. And it's such a good deal. I'm a sucker for a good deal. Um, and I'm a sucker for a, a, an awesome pattern. The more challenging the pattern, the better. Um, I really enjoy, you know, doing complex patterns in crochet. So, yeah. <sighs> yes, he is definitely a keeper, Dreamer. Yes. I, nobody better ever try to see. I always, I think about that sometimes, like, what would I do if some woman came along that like would actually, um, you know, cook and clean for him? Like, you know what I mean? I better watch out. But you know, there's other areas of compensation. There's other trade offs. There's other trade offs. We'll just leave it at that. There's other trade offs. <sighs> Yep, yep, yep. Yep, Jenny Rose, if eyes are open, I'm doing the drills. That's right. That's right. Miki, you do the same thing too? That's awesome. Amy and I are jealous for all the folks crafting this weekend. Angie, we can sell your stuff here. Yes, that'd be great. That would be awesome. Yes, it is. You're, um... You're right, Jody. It is his love language. It's definitely his love language to, he's an acts of service person. Um, and, um, or, you know, he performs acts of services for me. And in exchange, he's a physical person. He wants to be touched and, 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 and hugged and felt, he feels loved if he's, you know, through physical, physical touch, you know, just holding hands or, giving him a hug or, or anything is the way he, he's feel, you know, feels his love. So, um, it is getting about that time. I am going to pop out of here because I don't want to drag into the next person's time. And that's going to be Billy's crafting lounge. He's going to be coming on next. Um, and then after him is Tima. And so I want to thank everybody for hanging out with me tonight. I appreciate it. I'm sorry if I was a little bit woohoo out there. Like I said, it's been a long couple of days and I am very, very early into recovering, but thank you for putting up with me nonetheless. You guys have a great rest of your weekend and I'm sure I'll see you in the rest of the lives. All right. Good night, guys.